Hi everybody. So you've just seen how we can build a simple generator to create a small amount of electricity. That's enough to illuminate a tiny light bulb. Of course, you have to be wondering what would this mean for a giant city like New York City or even something like your home? That little generator that I built for you would never be enough to make the electricity that you need just for a two family home. So that means that at a power plant, we need much larger magnets. These magnets are huge and we need a lot of wire and the wire itself is very heavy, which means when you try to create that rotation that's required to induce that electricity, you're never going to be able to rely on human effort for that. You're going to have to find some other more powerful forces. So here we have that axle that we're going to need to rotate and the magnet is connected to it, right? Because we want that magnet to be able to spin within the wire in this case. And that axle could be connected to what we call a turbine. Now in this model, this is a very simplified model. So these blades, these fan blades, also known as a turbine, look like they're pretty small. But in fact, in a real power plant, the turbine blades would be huge and you probably would have many of them. And as you know, if you want to get turbines to move, you have to push air through them. You need a strong air current. Well, how do we get that air current? We don't always have wind that we can rely on. So what humans have figured out is we could create steam and allow steam to be forcefully pushed into the blades, which cause the rotation, which translates down the end of the road to make that magnet spin. Well, how do we make that steam? Well, you all know that in order to make steam, you just have to heat up water. And maybe you see where I'm going with this at this point. Coal has been one way that we have learned to make that heat. So we burn the coal, because coal is very efficient in that it makes a lot of heat when it combusts with oxygen. And that heats up the water to create the steam, to turn the turbine, to turn that axle, to turn the magnet, to induce that electricity in the wire. So this is a pretty awesome discovery of humans, right? This was, this was a triumph in the Industrial Revolution. However, there is the unfortunate problem we have to deal with when we think about what happens when we burn coal. So as you know, carbon, I mean coal, I'm sorry, is rich in carbon. And when we burn something that's rich in carbon, whether it's coal or a piece of wood, right, it's going to combust. It's going to go through the process of combustion. And that just means that the carbon in there, in this case, the carbon is reacting with oxygen in the air. And that's producing a lot of energy in the form of heat. It releases a lot of energy in the form of heat. But another thing that happens when you, when you put something that is carbon-based through combustion is the carbon and the oxygen also combine to make a new compound, carbon dioxide. And that's pretty unfortunate because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Now, I can tell you that in the past several years, my students have not fully understood what the connection is between carbon dioxide and greenhouse gas. Why, why do we use that term? Well, it taps into the concept of an actual greenhouse. And if any of you have ever seen a real greenhouse, you know that it's built mostly of glass. And the reason for that is you want it to be transparent to sunlight. You want sunlight to be able to come through and pass into the building so that the plants that you're using inside can use that sunlight to, to do the photosynthesis that they need to do to make their own energy. But the neat thing about a greenhouse is while the sunlight passes in and helps to warm up the inside of this building, the glass will slow down any escaping of heat. So greenhouses are actually very common in, in some of your more northern latitudes where you have to deal with the, the the, the cold season of winter. Well, carbon dioxide acts like a greenhouse in that if we pump a lot of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere by doing things like burning coal, then we are creating sort of a greenhouse effect 
meaning our atmosphere allows sunlight in very easily. That sunlight then hits the surface of the earth and warms it up. And that heat then cannot escape as easily as it normally could into outer space, like at night and stuff like that. Instead, the carbon dioxide helps to block and redirect a lot of that heat. And so the heat is not able to escape as easily, and that means that the carbon dioxide almost acts like a blanket in a way. It helps to keep the planet warmer than it would be, and that is what we call, that is what we refer to as the greenhouse effect. And it's an unfortunate thing that we have to deal with when we, when we use fossil fuels of any, any type, let alone coal. When we use fossil fuels to create the heat that we need to boil the water, to make the steam, to turn the turbines, to turn the magnet, we have to also deal with the pollution. And, and this is one aspect of that pollution, the carbon dioxide that you get. And it is something that we do need to be concerned with.